Welcome back to oh. the podcast. Welcome back to podcast, everybody. We're recording this. It's probably gonna be posted in like five hours. No, it's gonna be posted in a week. Is it? I thought they get posted like day of. No, they get they get recorded a week before posting. That way, oh. if something fucks up, then we have enough time to, you know, figure something out. All right. Hello and welcome to the podcast. Uh, here we read uh, RPG horror stories. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we read one each, sometimes multiple. That's what we're doing now. This will be the first time we've read multiple. It's the this is the start of the sometimes. Exactly. This makes it sometimes. So, do you want to uh, uh, hit us off? Since you you right. have two and I have one, so we're gonna sandwich yeah. it. A nice yeah. good sandwich. Everybody, uh, sit back, relax, enjoy your delicious sandwiches. I wish I had one of those. Sandwich. Moment, I'm I'm hungry. Um. All right, let's uh let's start. All this right. This was uh this was posted five days ago by user Princess underscore Safia. Uh. The story is titled The Worst Session Zero. Oh boy. Uh, hey, at least if anything's gonna go wrong, at least it's in se session zero and not like two years into the campaign. Yeah, yeah. Uh alright, okay. So longtime reader, first time poster. I told one of my DM friends this last night as I was just an utter emotional mess, and he said it sounds like the kind of stories posted here, so I decided to make an account and post it. I've DM'd several one-shots with friends before, but this was my first time running a campaign. 5e with a touch of Starfinder influence. Hmm. Uh, for those that are unaware, Starfinder is basically Pathfinder, but space... Yeah! It it's is not... The exact same system. There are differences. Yeah, and it's, it's like an offshoot of start of Pathfinder One E, which is an offshoot of D and D three point five. It has its differences from uh, the uh, from D and D's. Um... Oh God, yeah. Spelljammer. Like for, it, it, yeah, it's like it's different. For, it's distinctly it's different a, from Spelljammer. It's a different space system, and also just completely, uh, not completely, but mostly different. Yeah. Like the action economy is way different. You have three yeah. actions per turn. I think they are comparable in the way. Action. I, I think they are comparable in the way that like Pathfinder is comparable to D and D, as in they're the same like family of stuff. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. The actual details are distinctly different. <laughs> yeah. Uh, continuing on, it was also a different group. The session zero was a complete flop. And it's now killed the desire to DM for the time being. Oh boy. What happened? We were playing in a, in a public local hobby store I love to frequent, and where I play my with my other D&D groups. It started with the table I thought I'd booked actually being booked to another group, so my group was put into the back corner with two small tables. Oh, that's then the rough. Yeah. Then the supposed, quote, quiet night the store had told me this would be, was packed with Magic the Gathering, Warhammer, and two to three other TTRPG groups. At that so point, every... you demand a refund from the store. Yeah. Like, I would <laughs> straight up go... I, I would demand a refund for, you know, being given the wrong table and also being lied to about how busy the night would be. Yeah. My expectation... Oh. So everything was loud and stuffy and hot, and I couldn't hear the group well. Oh, My gross. expectations of a quiet night at the store is the Thursday game I plan, where there's no one except maybe some Yu-Gi-Oh players. Edit. This is not bashing the store or staff. They were really kind and went out of their way to, to find us a space after the booking issue, and even turned down the music because we were next to the speakers. It just happened to be a louder than usual night. Half the group showed up late, too. Despite oh, the, man. Yeah. Half the group, Just, I could never relate to that. Ugh. Huh. <laughs> Despite this being the time we'd organized to make our characters, one player had al already done his with a super suspicious stat roll of 17, 17, 
19, 14, 14, 16 at level 3, which he wouldn't tell me how he got, as well as equipping them with end game level 18 and to 20 homebrew mithril gear. Ugh. I'm going to call him Mithril Dude from now on. Mm. Mithril is supposed to be important. Like, that's stuff that you uh, find after the end of an epic quest, uh, or a, a Mithril chain shirt as a joke. Mm. Uh. I've got a glass of water. Oh, nice. Uh, I, got a I got a bottle of pink lemonade. Of course you do. Yeah. I'm surprised you don't have Arizona tea. Look, I can't afford to just go to the store every time we do a recording. It's 99 cents! Yeah, and I had to ask you for five bucks so I could buy rice. That's fair. Uh, yeah. Responses to questions like, what are your no-nos? What would you like to get out of this? Do you have any expectations? Etc. We're met with silence or, I don't know. Although in fairness, half the group were new. While having mostly new players isn't an issue, it meant no one but me and the Mithril dude had resource books to make characters. He wouldn't let them use his books, so everyone had to take turns with my player's handbook, making everything take forever. Forever? Forever. It could... Oh, no, they probably couldn't borrow from the game store, since at the game store they're usually, like, in plastic. Wrapped. Yeah, they're usually wrapped in plastic. Mithril dude then spent the session working on his backstory. I had a question list for backstories all ready to give him a guideline. Questions like, what's their personality? Why were they on the train to Waterdeep? Do they have the two? Why did they choose their class? This question sheet also included answers and op or example a answers and options in case they got too confused. After two hours, I wasn't expecting a masterpiece, but also not. I live near Candledeep and solve mysteries. That's literally it. One sentence. After we'd made the characters, I had an adventure plan to introduce them since we had four hours booked. The players decided they didn't want to play and left. Uh... The end. Extra. Oh, and to top it off, the main route I take home had nighttime roadworks I didn't know about, so I took my long backup detour, which was also roadworked. Oh. I drove through I don't know where in the dark and rain to get home. A 20 minute trip took an hour. Oh, God. I feel that so, so much. Like, so, uh, when it rained a couple weeks ago... Uh, oh, yeah. The, it's there supposed were... to rain real much. It's supposed to rain a lot today. Yeah, but I don't have work today, so... <laughs> um, yeah, but my brother's going to the Renfest, and uh, oh. it's supposed to be raining fucking all day in Todd Mission. Oh, God. I haven't been to Todd Mission in, like, a year. Uh, last time I went there was... Five for me! Well, I didn't... I only went to go pick up my sister. Cause, uh... I wanna, I wanna go to the Renfest so bad, but I have to stay home and help my mom. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, when it rained, uh, like, last week, um... Yeah. And it was on a Friday, and it was at, like, five... So I was ready to go home. All I had was like a 15 minute trip down I-35 uh, between me and home. However, because of the rain and because it's Austin, of course, uh, of course, all but one lane was closed due to various accidents that happened down uh I-35, because nobody knows how the fuck to drive in rain, so what was supposed to take a 15-minute drive ended up taking two hours. Oh, lord. Yeah. Well, it was actually an hour and a half, but still. That's still a lot more than 15 minutes. Yeah. It was, uh, it was not fun. Uh... Yeah. Uh, as for uh, this, it, it... You know, sometimes it's just bad luck happens, and like, these things happen, the, the store is definitely uh, has some of the blame with uh, giving them the wrong table and neglecting to tell them about the uh, uh, the Magic the Gathering contest when they asked for it to be a quiet night. 
It was, it was good on them to turn down the music because they were sat next to the speakers, though. Yeah. So I'll be honest. I've never been to a I've never been to a local friendly game store that had music playing. It was probably music for the tournament. Maybe. Uh, yeah. It might not have even been a tournament. It might have just been a bunch of people playing Magic. They do that sometimes. Yeah, I guess. Maybe. Uh, not to mention the Warhammer players. Yeah. Oh, God. It's been like two years. It's been over two years since I last played Warhammer. My favorite Warhammer story is... I the spent so much money on Skaven and I can't even use them. Rip. Uh, oh, yeah. Last time you bought Skaven was... When we visit, when I visited, I mean, I've bought some since, but like, oh yeah, but well, because you know they were on sale. I know, and it was right before the pandy hit. It was during pandy. Oh, I, I was at the store with my brother, and I was like, oh hey, this chaos Spain box is on sale. It's got a, it's got two rat ogres. No, I mean when I when I visited and he got the yeah, skinny yeah. Evan. Uh, yeah, it was like it was like. Two weeks before the pandy. <laughs> yeah, well, it was it was ongoing in areas other than Waco. Yeah, it, it, it was had... Like, we, we had just gotten the hint of, like, hey, some people in Baylor got it. No, not even that. Like, it, it had only just arrived in, like, California when, when yeah. I did. Because I visited, like, the last week of uh, January. Oh, right. Shit. Yeah. It, I think it might have been early February, actually. Yeah, it was either late January or early February. But uh, we were like, oh, man, we should do this next month. We should go bowling. Uh, yeah. And then and the then pandy. March, and then March happened, and uh, oops. Yeah. I'll and, be honest, I, I think I've lost that D20. <laughs> ah, rip. Oh, well. These things happen. Oh, well. So, uh, yeah, it, with that story. Quarter, it's fine. <laughs> With yeah, it, we we got it out of the uh, the bargain dice uh, jar. Yeah, we got it out the defect jar at the uh, not even not even the the local friendly game store. It was a uh, it was a game exchange. Yeah, I do like that they're selling more. Like it 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 was nice when it was just like video games, DVDs, and magazines. But broadening the horizons is good. Yeah, now now that we're able to like buy snacks there it's really cool yeah like uh soda that tastes and like honeydew just, oh jesus my my fucking thing just flashed yeah i saw that <laughs> oh that's gonna look weird in the video uh i don't know if it got caught on the video it could have been on like a frame that wasn't i don't know i don't know we'll see either way uh so with this story there's really not much that can be uh, done different like and everything that happened was out of op's hands um oh yeah like it was just a really i, I mean bad i guess thing. uh raining in the mythical get, guy get is... different players next time i guess or uh but how are they supposed to, how are you supposed to know that one of them's gonna be toxic and the rest are gonna be just like they're gonna go through like two hours of character building and then go actually you know what i don't want to play i'm gonna go home now bye yeah, and for all we know, the reason why it, it could have been the environment of like you know being in a crowded store that made them not oh, yeah, want to stick definitely. around. Like, there's definitely, just a definitely. yeah, it, it's just the the a brewing of the perfect storm that led to this. Oh, yeah. There's not really any advice we can give beyond like if you see a player like Mithril guy, rein them in. Don't be afraid to straight up tell them no. Yeah, I, I have told just my be like, <laughs> just be like, no, sorry, you're not co you're not coming in with that character sheet. Roll your dice here at the table where we can see. Yeah, I have told my players no. Like I've told Chalkfee no when they wanted to play a coffee lock. Uh good. Yeah, good. <laughs> there, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with telling your players no. Um, so, uh, I guess that is. Uh, my story turn now. Uh, so, uh, Biddy, do you like Pokemon? Uh, I I do. I do enjoy the Pokemons. All right. Pikachu. 
<laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I have been playing the new Pokemon. The other ones? <laughs> I've uh I've been playing the new Pokemon uh and um What starter did you go with? Was it was it Sprigatito? Of, of course it was Weed Cat. There was what no did... there was no hint that I would choose anything different. I referred to what the others. I didn't. I don't name Aww. my Pokemon. I don't you name, don't name your, You don't nickname your Pokemon? No. Uh, unless it's Aww. like on stream. If I'm playing for the stream, I will nickname them with the goal of using every possible character. Or not, or every available character. Like I make their names. Uh, I, I fill out the text box with their I don't, name. I don't know how much. I don't know how much character space is available for um, for nicknaming them in Scarlet and Violet. Well, in but, older versions, uh, it was like eight or nine. Yeah, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, but when when I get Scarlet next month, I'm gonna see if I'm gonna be able to name my Sprigatito Sir Boofington. Maybe. My girlfriend named hers Weedfield. Nice. Uh, but yeah, uh, there are things I do like. There are things I don't like. A lot of things I don't like. Uh, but there's also a lot of a, a few things I do like. Um, and the reason why I ask is because this game, or this uh story, is yeah. about Pokemon. Not the new Pokemon, but oh god, no. Yeah. Because this, this, this one's like 11 days ago, and Pokemon came out, uh, checks watch, yesterday by the time this was recorded. Yeah. <laughs> so really dating the video. So this is one that we, uh, we were looking at, uh, when we were, this is one that we looked at when we, uh, saw, uh, when we were looking for a story to read last week. Um, yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, uh, I decided to read it. So... Um, you haven't read it, right? You only no, saw the I've, title? I've, all, I've, all I've seen was, like, the first paragraph, and I barely skimmed it anyway. Yeah, okay. So, this one is called The Blank Sheet by Tiny Evil... Or, sorry, Evil underscore Tiny underscore Wolf. Uh, it's only got a hundred and six... Evil Tiny Wolf. That's... That doesn't match up well syn uh, s syntax with English. Yeah, I know. That's not the right order. No, no, you see, there are a tiny wolf that happens to be evil rather than an evil wolf that happens to be tiny. Still. You know, it's like the difference between a zombie clown and a clown zombie. I know, I know, I'm just saying. It sounds weird. Yeah. So, this one only has 160 upvotes. Uh, the first story I read had, like, 63. <laughs> we try to get the ones that aren't like in the thousands with dozens yeah, we, of. We try not to go for like the tip top because we already know fucking someone else is going to be reading it already anyway. Yeah, so we want to highlight ones that uh, seem like they haven't uh, reached YouTube yet. Yeah, we know we get like two viewers. Yeah, if that. And ourselves. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, this one is called The Blank Sheet. <clears throat> mm. This is the ballad of the first, uh, of my first time attempting to DM a game. About ten years ago, my boyfriend, now husband, congrats, uh, Aww. wanted to get me to D&D, &D, uh, into D&D. &D. Uh, I had a negative first experience at the game, so he coaxed me into it by introducing me to his colleague's D&D &D club as they played a Pokemon tabletop game. The game was largely homebrewed and horribly broken, but the whole club was having uh, was following the same rules. Uh, after being a player for a few games, I was confident in running my own. I drew up my own maps, created my own central hub city, and had a running joke plot about the mayor being unable to build a Pokemon stadium. The players were all being summoned by the city's professor, who needed research assistance that could act as a communication with one of her executive excavation teams as they worked in an area with no cell phone signal before the game. Can you imagine cell phones in Pokemon? Yes. <laughs> I know. They're in the new Pokemon. I mean, yeah, they're... Your Pokedex and fucking Sword and Shield was a Rotom Dex. Well, this one's just a straight-up 
uh, phone in, that happens to have a Pokedex app. Well, it doesn't even have the Pokedex app. Uh, Not even a ro it just it's just a Rotom phone case. No, it it has a Rotom living inside of it, but okay, that's what I meant. But it doesn't have okay. that Pokedex app gets installed like halfway through the tutorial. So it's a phone first, Pokedex second. <laughs> I think it was the same in Sword and Shield, but I'm not sure. It's been a bit since I've played it. Uh, so, ah, that didn't pick up well on the veto. Ah, uh, rip. Ah. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Uh, no cell signal. Uh, before the game started, I made spreadsheets to track the party's money and their character subclass options. For the most part, the game went great. Uh, since it was my first game, I limited the game to four players. Uh, my boyfriend made a juggler, and the others made a martial artist, a photographer, and a breeder. The breeder was my favorite to play, and I'd personally made multiple characters with various subclasses, so I was familiar with the class and how the class worked. Uh, so in early levels, I helped her with the class, and backed off once she seemed to get the hang of it. I was sadly not aware that this particular player would end up being my problem. Uh, Oof. Breeder in my game uh, was the only other girl in the group. And I ended up finding out that's because she had been the only girl before my arrival, uh, and she was used to special treatment. Special treatment that she had assumed I would just give to her too. The Pokemon tabletop game we used to ha we used had an interesting method of handling out experience. XP was given as two separate numbers. The trainer got XP which would level their class and you could pick which order subclass, subclass skills were learned. Pokemon got XP that the trainer could divvy up however they choose. So if you got a total number but so if you got a total number, but if that number went all what? So if you got a total number, uh I pulled it up so that I can read along. Yeah, that's just, that's a really awkward sentence. But but if that number went to all to one Pokemon, yeah, or got split up was up to the tri Okay. I'm going to read it a way that makes sense. Okay, so you get a total number, and you could give it uh, either all to one Pokemon or split it up with Pokemon. Uh, it's up to you as the trainer. You could theoretically use uh, one Pokemon in a fight and give all of the XP to another that wasn't even in combat. Breeders got a percentage boost to Pokemon XP and held level to help level up babies faster, and how much of a boost was dependent on which subclass features you had. As stated above, I had a spreadsheet where I kept track of which subclass options the party had been picking. Whenever I told the party to whenever I told the party their XP, I had a separate number I was telling the breeder based on which options I knew she had. I'd mostly been tracking this information so I could make sure I was leaning into the skills the party had shown interest in. The juggler wanted to do more damage based on the juggler wanted to do more damage based on which type of Pokeball he throws at a shopkeep who could craft Pokeballs from acorns and technically it would be apricorns. Yeah, uh, uh Actually, it's yeah. apricorns. It's apricorn. The ancient art was uh, dis was created in Johto and spread across the world. <laughs> so on, Johto, Do. yeah. Uh, you could craft uh, pokeballs from apricorns and randomly set up areas on the map where the apricorns could be found. The photographer wants to learn the moves she's captured on film. Professor helps him upgrade his camera in the downtime so he can develop film faster. Uh, then came the final fight. I'd been dropping hints about the two team rocket grunts the party had run into multiple times. My boyfriend and the martial artist appeared to be the only ones who had figured out that the du duo were a red herring. The martial artist. Ooh, that's fun. That's fun. Yeah, I like red herrings. 
Um, the martial artist used his character knowledge to speculate his theory to the party that one of the grunts had a powerful psychic type Pokemon. First round of combat, Breeder threw out a level 1 bug type that she hatched on the way to the encounter. The whole table was horrified. We hadn't had any combat since the egg had hatched, so it was definitely level 1, and its only stats were that uh, were what that Pokemon starts with, plus breeder bonuses. But this was the final fight, and she insisted she'd rolled really well on her bonuses. So I assumed that she made a glass cannon. The party got hit by the first few attacks, but they had been healing, so the players staying up didn't seem too odd. But the level 1 staying up was a red flag. I asked to see its cheat. She tried to deflect by saying he was he was low but still up, and I and tried to refuse. The refusal was a bigger red flag, so I got up from my seat and went to her side of the table. What I saw killed any enjoyment I'd been having from that session. Her sheet was blank, entirely blank. Yes. As if, uh, as were a few of her other sheets. Her own character sheet hadn't been updated in several levels, probably not since I'd backed off from helping her with the, cl with the class. Come to find out, she stopped tracking anything months ago, except to add fun things to her inventory. She'd heal when she felt appropriate, or would let a Pokemon knock be knocked out when she thought it would make sense, but hadn't been writing down health XP, or even her own character abilities for months. She rolled stats of level ups with everyone else and just never wrote them down. No one had ever checked her character sheets before, so I was the first DM to ever look at any of her sheets after the first session of character creation. In front of the club, she admitted that this was her first game where she'd ever actually written anything down. On her sheets past getting the character approved. Uh, oh my god. god. That is terrible. She w she's been winging it this whole fucking time. Oh god. Oh my uh, god. Not gonna lie. A little bit impressive that it took this long for her to get caught. You know how hard it is to wing it in D&D &D with an ongoing character? Like, it's so hard. That would not be it, it. That would not be able to happen in my campaign. Not just because we use D and D Beyond, please sponsor us, but also because ah. we would regularly, like, we ask, we regularly ask, uh, whenever someone uses a big spell, we ask if they have the spell slot for that. You know, because uh, yeah. and and also we're like, what's that spell do again? And we'll all look it up ourselves. Yeah, uh, and, like, I, god, I Not only that, but for the most, for the most of us, our character sheets are publicly available to the rest of the party. Yeah, on D&D &D Beyond. Please sponsor us. D&D I mean, Beyond not sponsored, but please? Yeah, please sponsor us. Please give us money for D&D &D characters? Yes. I promise to spend it exclusively on, uh, officially licensed D&D &D minis. Yes, it. I will spend all of my. I will spend all of my money on uh on dicelings. Exclusive. I will buy five black dragon dicelings. D and D Beyond, please give me money. D and D Beyond, if you give me money, I will buy every single dice on the website. I mean, I would. I would want to do that too, but also, you know, that'd be expensive. Yeah. yeah. But also, in reality, uh, I'd probably spend it on Hero Forge. <laughs> Hero uh -huh. Forge, please sponsor us. I have two I minis. Think, I think there's integration between Hero Forge and um, and D and D Beyond. Maybe I know there's integration Maybe. between Tailspire and Hero Forge. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, back to the story. <laughs> back to the story. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. 
No one had ever checked her character sheets before, so I was the first DM. She, she admitted that's the first time she ever wrote anything on her sheet past character being approved. She just brought extra sheets of paper with her to sessions so that she would have papers to rustle through behind the screen during combat. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, the only thing she'd ever reference was the subclass options. Since players were allowed to pick what order they gained skills, she, was, she would just pull whatever sounded beneficial to what was currently happening. Now, as long as it was a skill from her class or subclass, no one had ever questioned it before. Uh, I ended combat there, gave an epilogue which was functionally a bad end. The party still got to beat the bad guy, but at a horrible cost. After that, she uh, hated me. Every campaign she was in, she had DMs suddenly checking her sheets at the beginning and end of every session to make sure she was actually keeping track of health and consumable items. She blamed me for the new problems she was having after years of playing with this group without issues. Boyfriend upgraded himself to fiancé and eventually convinced me to run a, my campaign again with an entirely new group. I moved the game online so I could better see character sheets, and Fiancé stepped up as code DM since he had already known my main story beats. He helped with combat encounters and allowed me to go further gremlin mode on my spreadsheets. I made the spreadsheets. <laughs> I made the numbers in. I made the most of the spread. I made most of the spreadsheets visible to the party so everyone could see what information was being tracked. And I finally got to do a happy ending to the campaign. And my, one yeah. of my players liked the story enough to do a spin-off sequel where their character from my game had gone on to become a Pokemon professor and we all made characters who were trainers she was now mentoring. The professor from my game even got referenced as, as being consulted for advice in a few stages. Aw, uh, that's uh, nice. That is nice. Also, fuck the breeder. That did not yeah, come out how I meant it to say. <laughs> but oh. yeah, holy shit. Yeah. She had been playing with this group for, for years. years. And was She's blaming DD for years and didn't. Oh my goodness. And on top of that, blaming uh, OP for suddenly none of the DMs trusting her. I wouldn't trust her. I wouldn't even let her. I would kick her out. I would not play yeah. with her if that shit happened. Oh yeah, Ugh. and like with with that whole bombshell dropping, I feel that I feel that justifies that campaign ending with the bad end. Oh, absolutely! Like, oh god. So that's the like. Some sometimes people forget <laughs> D and D does not always end ha with a with you know the heroes winning and everybody going home to their families in fact most sometimes, of the time it doesn't it ends with a tpk world, yeah like even when you get uh, even when you get all the way to the like to the final boss fight you can you you can still die and lose oh yeah like there's we're probably going to die in the curse of strahd game that we're playing probably i'm doing my best to keep that from happening i am the Same. cleric uh and next level up, I get to finally start revivifying. You got the hiccups? Yeah, just slightly. Um, right. So yeah, uh, the lesson to learn from this... Uh, write down the shit that happens! Like, holy shit! Don't the lesson wing to learn, it! The lesson to learn is uh, DMs... Check your player's character sheets every now and then. Yes, I do check the character sheets now and then. Even if you have to make an excuse, like, uh, uh, even if like, you have, like, whenever they're leveling, yeah. be like, uh, oh, you need help picking what you gonna, what spells you're gonna add. Uh, let can I see your character sheet to see what spells you have? Like, you know, or even just to be like. Hey, can I see your character sheet? I need to see if you've got something in your inventory. That is actually way better than, uh... Sure, like... Yeah. Y y it might be a situation in which you are actually checking to see if they have something for in their inventory. I it, it could kind of reveal to the party that, hey, there's something's probably going to get stolen soon. Yeah. Or you could just lie. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, and also... You're allowed to lie to your players. Yeah, you could just be like, hey, uh, there's an item that y'all got. I want to make sure, I, I want to know who has it. That would put them on their toes. Like, oh shit, what item was it? Is it cursed? Yeah, you know? just be like, hey, uh, so, who, who's who got that, uh, who's got that pair of dice that, we, that y'all found at the, uh, found on the shipwreck? Now, if you do and that, then the person... Then everybody, <laughs> then everybody will be like, oh, no. Oh, dice, not me. Not me. Oh, so none of y'all have it? Let me see your inventories. <laughs> oh, man. The dice, they are accursed. God damn. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, if, uh, advice to players. Keep track of your character sheet. Advice for DMs. Check the character sheets every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Or, for those absolutely determined to wing it, here's the advice for you. Leave. Yeah. Play... Go play a fucking video game. Yeah. Go, go, go fucking, like, roleplay on the internet. Yeah. yeah just... Uh, don't, don't ruin the fun for everyone else. Play something where winging it is part of the game, like three Sherlock Holmes and a vampire, or Honey Heist. Yeah, go go play some fucking one sheet RPGs. Don't bring it to like a whole ass campaign. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you have one more story for us to close the night. Yes, I've got, uh, I've got another story, uh, posted by user original username X, a very original username. Um, posted four days ago. The 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 story is titled. The worst RPG session I've ever played, and it's all the GM's fault. Oh no. So this story took place in the 40k RPG Dark Heresy, which isn't common on here, so I'm going to give a bit of context before getting into it. For anyone who knows what 40k and Dark Heresy are, skip down to the players. I'm not going to skip because uh, you don't really know uh, Warhammer. And probably not many of the people who will come across this video will, so I will describe it to y'all. Warhammer 40k is way too much to describe here, but if I had to give a one-sentence rundown that gives you enough knowledge to follow along, it would be Grimdark Intergalactic Cyberpunk Dystopia. Not a great description, but it'll do. In Dark Heresy, you play as the Inquisition, or the Religious Se Secret Police Force. It's a D100 systems where this is It's a D100 system where low rolls are better, and for every ten you beat the DC, you get you get by bleh. And for every ten you beat the DC by, you get one degree of dis success. The more degrees of success you pass by, the better you did. One more piece of context: psychers are mages who get their power from hell. If not properly trained. Their heads will explode, and they will accidentally summon a demon. Oh no! Yep, that's uh, not even not even unique to the RPG. That's just that's just 40k lore. Yeah. Psychers, if they psychers, if they are uh, not able to rein it in, they will be uh, rounded up by the Inquisition and immediately executed. Nobody's ex nobody expects the or you know fed to the basic basically sacrificed for the uh, the good of the emperor what's the inquisition uh, called the inquisition it just the they're, inquisition? The, they're the inquisitors oh it, it, it's the inquisition the people it. in the inquisition are in, are the inquisitors damn it i can't make a there's not enough syllables to make a, a spanish inquisition joke yeah uh, so, the players. Tech Priest Medic. Me. Combat Specialist Bodyguard. Inquisitor Skill Monkey. And an Astropath. A Psyker Support Mage. We all, including the GM, are very used to playing this system and playing with each other. This is our normal gaming group. We've been together for years, and we still play together. Session starts. We begin the session landing on a space station and immediately get to work setting up a safe house. Everything's uneventful. Bodyguard wants some fancy cybernetic something or other, asks me to buy and install it for him. This is obviously going to take time, both to install and for him to recover. 
and we don't want to sit on the session if it's important, so we ask the GM, out of character, if we have downtime before the plot picks, kicks off, or if we should wait. GM says we have time, nothing important will happen without us, so we get to work. The Inquisitor and the Astropath go off, for a, go, go off for a walk around the station to check things out while I do the surgery. On their walk, the Astropath senses that someone just had their psychic awakening nearby, and both rush to the scene. Oh, that doesn't sound there, good. Yeah. There, they find a bunch of people bagging and kidnapping a young boy who's obviously a psyker. I bet his eyes were glowing and such. Uh, Astropath rolls to see if they, if these are the people who are supposed to be kidnapping young psychers. Which he would know, since he works for that organization. <laughs> I, I find that particular sentence kind of funny. He rolls a d100 and rolls a 1. With oh. something like 7 degrees of success. Ooh. Remember, what, remember, low rolls are better. Oh, okay. Basically, he rolled the absolute best thing he could. Oh, okay. GM says, yep, they're the right dudes. The Inquisitor walks up to them, flashes, in flashes his bag, and attempts to elicit their assistance in future operations. The guys look at the badge, look at each other, drop the gear, and pull out their guns. What? They were not the right dudes. But that's bullshit! Yeah, there's, there's a reason why it's called the worst RPG session I've ever played, and it's all the GM's fault. If you don't want your players to figure something out, don't let them roll. Yeah. A fight ensues between the two party members and 12 fake Psyker police officers. Our guy's equipment and skills were vastly superior, but with half the party sitting on the sidelines, it was a slog, and the astropath went into negative HP. Some of the baddies flee to warn their organization, and the two characters alone cannot stop them. The fight gets down to last two enemies, so the PCs drop their weapons and attempt to incapacitate the last guys with some enhanced interrogation. They as they pin the two enemies, one of the guys who had run off turns around, comes back, and starts shooting his allies. The enemy kills one of the prisoners before the astropath makes his head explode, and the, PC drag and the PCs drag their last prisoner to the safe house. Back at the safe house, I'm finishing up the surgery where, when the prisoner gets dragged in. We start preparing to interrogate him until the GM says, Oh, by the way, this, guy, this, bad, this guy's badly wounded and about to die. Mind you, he didn't take a single hit in the fight and should have been perfectly fine. But whatever. I dust off my medical tools and get to work patching his wounds, passing my roll easily with five or six degrees of success. GM says, Uh... Your medical work sets off the bomb in his brain, and his head explodes. Ugh. I reply, What? First off, this guy shouldn't be injured at all. Second, even if he was, I'm healing gunshot wounds at most. I wouldn't be poking anywhere near his brain, much less the bomb in there. Third, if the bomb was going to be set off by my, me by my medical attention, that probably should have happened. only happened if I failed the roll. God damn. GM, GM is adamant. The guy's head explodes and we're left with no prisoners. Session ends there and we all start listing our grievances. Uh. One. One. The GM shouldn't have told the bodyguard and I that we can do a major medical procedure before the plot kicks, kicks off and then proceed to kick off the plot, taking us out of the entire session. I, I at least got to do something. Poor body, bodyguard hardly spoke a dozen words and didn't make a single roll. Astropath should have easily known that the Psyker police guards were frauds. The GM's excuse was, But they had uniforms! The combat should have been scaled down to reflect the fact that half the party was missing. Because of the previous three points, the escaped enemies now knew exactly who and what we were, and that we were after them. Our role as Seeker Police was completely compromised, and our subtlety was reduced to zero. Five. The GM very obviously went out of his way to contrive, contrive as many reasons as possible for us to fit for us, eh, or as possible as to why we couldn't at least interrogate one of the fake police officers and figure out what was going on. The GM gets fed up with our complaints and says, "If all you're gonna do is is complain, I'm not giving out any XP for this session," and leaves. We did not play another session. Oh man. A note to all GMs who, ev who will ever try to run a mystery slash intrigue slash investigation plot. If your players do reasonable things with their skills and abilities that might reveal a piece of the plot early, 
Don't cover it up to keep the mystery going. Let them succeed and reward them for their ingenuity, even if it throws off your planned plot. Yeah. That's the end of the story. Oh my god. So, yeah, that's a... Uh... You know, yeah, I completely agree. If they... If someone figures out something, let them figure it out. You know what a good ex uh, good example of that is when when you fi when you just happen to figure out that the judge was a devil. Yeah, it, I was based using, on using the my flimsiest. <laughs> using my re my re my deductive reasoning at, of well, he sure is defacing a god. That seems kind of bad. Maybe he's fake. Yeah. And from there you jump to the conclusion, he's probably a devil. I did not do... I didn't, like... You had no lead-up or any clues other than that to that this guy that this guy is fiendish in nature. It pissed I purely, me. I purely <laughs> went, well, you know, he's defacing religious stuff and also tearing down... Uh, most other temples, except for this incredibly defaced temple of uh, Tyr. Tyr? Temple of Tyr. Tyr. And, and, and I was like, you know, that's, pr that's pretty bad. I might not know a lot about religion, but that sounds like anti-religion. Yeah. You know, you know what's, you know what's anti-religion? The devil. devil. Uh, Satan. Yeah, and uh, I did not like can you imagine how unsatisfying it would have been if I had, like, a cop-out of, Oh, no, he's just an elf. He, just an elf. He's just an asshole. Like, that would have been so unsatisfying. But yeah, you guessing what it is and then being vindicated when that turned out to be true was probably... And then... <laughs> the, and then me being like, Well, you know, Tear's blind. He has no eyes. Those are some shiny gems up in that eyeball, and up in them eye sockets. Yeah. And then later, it the fucking statue be hiding the thing that's hiding his devilish nature. Yeah, allowing him to exist inside of a temple of tear. The thing about a mystery is you need to have the proper clues to let people figure it out. If they figure it out early, that's okay. They're supposed to figure it out. Yeah. I used context clues, and also being a little dumb. Yeah. And then we broke the statue, and like, <laughs> and then suddenly now, uh, God can see the little devil hiding out in his out in his in his church. <laughs> yep. And now he's at a casino. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, I'm yeah. I'm just glad there wasn't any any like big heart like. Sure, he might not like us, but there wasn't any like real hard feelings. Yeah, no, he his hard feelings are towards um, Corvus in particular. Yeah, no, I was just there. He's pragmatic. He doesn't know that I'm the one that figured it all out. He, he just knows that I'm, I'm some scrappy little kobold that kicked his ass once. Yeah, that he blamed well, for... that helped kick his ass. That he blamed for uh, various vandalisms. Remember? He had you arrested? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, he... And then my ass fucking bent the, the jail bars as I tried to get out. <laughs> oh, God. Y'all should definitely watch World... Uh, Y'all should watch World of Tapir. It's the D&D game we're referencing. It is buck wild. It's fun. It is fun. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Cornello hates the other, uh, generals more than he hates y'all, so... Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, like... We're just mortals. We're gonna die eventually anyway. Yeah. Yep. Meanwhile, <laughs> they kicked him out of their fun club, and he's mad about it. Yeah. How dare they try to take over the world without him? He's the one that- he was the general of Avarice. Everything should be his. Exactly. Uh, he so should be the one there taking over the world. Instead, yeah. he's stuck here in a casino making pennies. Yeah. But, you know, still hoarding them because, you know, they're his pennies. Yeah. And also, pennies in the grand scheme of, like, things. Yeah, I I'm saying pennies as in this is an immortal devil who has lived for a s since probably about two seconds after the beginning of time. Uh, 
Anything less than like a hundred billion, a hundred billion platinum coins is pennies to him. Especially since he he's he's from the Ring of Avarice. Exactly. So That's anything is pennies to him because it will never be enough. Well, n n what what will probably happen is he gets a hundred billion platinum. He's like, "Whoa, that's a big number. Ain't enough though." Yeah, it'll never be it'll, enough. It'll be <laughs> it'll be like, "Ooh, that's so close, so close to being just enough." I need more though. Give exactly. me more. Exactly. So, uh, the moral of the story is, uh, if you have a mystery, don't try to bullshit ways for players to not figure out yeah. after they've already figured it out let them like if you don't want them to get a clue don't let them roll to f discover it don't let them roll to discover it or just e even if it's not something that you roll for like for instance uh mentioning that the statue to tear is big and shiny and covered in gold and jewels yeah with big sapphires in the eyes yeah yeah and like with my like base knowledge of of D and D religion of you know tears blind and also he's one of the more humble gods. Yeah. So yeah, let them figure it out, and don't try to like don't, don't be an asshole. Yeah, don't change the twist for the sake of don't change the twist just because your players figured it out. Part of the fun of having a twist is. Being able to go back and look at the clues that led up to it. And if you have those clues set out, then players will notice and they will figure it out. And that's a good thing. That means you did things right. Uh, yeah. Because then if you... If you... Uh, if you change what the twist is, then all those clues they gather don't make sense. And it makes the players feel like idiots. Unwarranted. Uh yeah, we can be Id we're idiots most of the time. Yeah. Now, uh, there is one thing I want to say uh, before we sign off. Uh huh. And that is that plot twist. I have another story. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one I uh, found um last night. Uh, it was posted four days ago. Um. It's a medium story, so it's short. Um, it is called New Player Leaves for Religious Reasons by Primo the Pro. Uh, so, I, Forever DM, always like to run new sessions with people who haven't played before. My style is usually rule of cool, and if I don't let Rog get in the way of it, uh, we have a good time. Uh... I give lots of freedom for people to play and do whatever. I encourage evil characters, and if you're new, it's a great way to just dip your feet into tabletop RPGs. Running a sesh with veterans of the craft, uh, running a sesh with veterans of the craft, except for a new guy we'll call Drogue. Um, the setting is pirate themed. Uh, think Sea Beasts meets One Piece. I don't know what Sea Beast is. I don't know, but I do like pirate-themed campaigns, as you can guess. They are pirate fun. Yes. Uh, where your role on the ship is as important as your race. Everyone rolls up characters. Uh, if you don't care about their places and ras uh, place Places and races? <laughs> races and classes. Uh... If you don't care what their races and classes were, skip this paragraph. Uh, we Read have. It anyway. I am. We have a long time best friend roll up a total cartographer bard. Um, we have a human wizard chef. Uh, a satyr first mate who's a high DPS ranger. And a dragonborn paladin, paladin helmsman. Our new guy, who had never played DD before, rolled up a drow rogue with me. Uh, he was going to be a new hire from the captain who wanted an investigator on the ship to look for mutineers. That sounds pretty neat. Yeah. First session rolls and Drogue sits down at the table with his papers and says, Let's open with a prayer. Everyone, oh, was, boy. everyone was so shocked. We had no idea he was religious and we just sort of went with it. 
He prayed for like five minutes, blessing everyone individually at the table. Okay, that was weird. Moving on. Half an hour in, our paladin makes a prayer to the god of light and guidance. They have gods that are based on the alignment chart. Uh, each alignment has a god, and my world is entirely homebrewed. Uh, kudos, that is very difficult to do. Ah, <laughs> well, to be fair, they only had to make nine gods. That's fair. Um, and is immediately interrupted by Drogue. You can only pray to god. Our paladin replies, he is. Drogue replies, no, like the father of Jesus of, and you and me, right? Paladin takes a few seconds before responding with, no? <laughs> this was the wrong thing to say, apparently. Drogue hastily packs up his things and storms out. I'm so shocked by this, I hesitate and only manage to catch him at the door. He won't listen to me and leaves. I don't know what you're trying to induct me into, but I won't have any of it. Uh, when I tried to reply, he literally put his finger up to me with, mm. uh. I have never had anyone do this to me before, so I let him go. When I got back to the table, there was a long silence before the cartographer says, We can keep playing, right? And so we did. No hate for anyone religious or people who disagree with D&D &D on a religious level, but how do you not know about this before you come to the session? I even mentioned that I wrote up gods in the story. I think he didn't realize anyone would pray to them. Anyone can tell me this thought process? I'm all ears. How the fuck do you- Uh, what a story. How is this- has this person never heard of the satanic panic? Maybe, maybe they, maybe he thought he could go in and convert everyone to to Catholicism. But then why would he just leave then? At the first hurdle. Uh, uh, because he's weak. Ah. Uh. The first mention of a god outside of his own being prayed to, he's like, that, that's not right. I'm leaving. Ah, oh, God. But not this guy's god. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, uh, I guess uh, the only moral we can really say is, like, don't be, be aware, a, don't be a be, dick. Uh, don't, don't be a dick. <laughs> be aware of the games you're going into. Yeah, listen to the, uh, the setting description that the DM gives. And also, if you're religious, don't be a dick about it. There's other yeah. religions. And also, D&D is a game. Like, <laughs> oh it's, my god. It, it's a game. It, yeah. You're not actually praying to the god of light. It's it, it's like going in a video game and like you kneel. Oh no, it's don't like, you see the, like, the god of light and goodness and stuff it is a, uh, it, 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 it's, it's actually Satan. Because any god that's not god is Satan. Ugh. The, these Christians with their false idol nonsense. God. I, I look up in the sky, I can see the sun. Yeah. Oh no! The evil, the devil up there, the devil disguised as the sun god has taken away my vision! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I've been punished by stare for staring at its radiant beauty for too long. <laughs> uh, oh, get me some wine okay. to pour in my eyes so that I can be healed. Okay, let's stop bashing on on Christians. <laughs> uh, let's be honest, we're bashing on fanatics. We're bash we're bashing on uh televangelists. That too. Uh, God, this story really makes me want to watch Dark Dungeons. I love that piece of shit. Someone in the comments mentioned it. <laughs> oh shit, did they? <laughs> yeah. Uh, from, uh, from user, uh, Arnacht Fen. This reads like someone trying amateur investigative journalism to verify that Dark Dungeons was 100% true. Oh, man. Dark Dungeons is... Uh, Dark Dungeons... 
terrible movie, but oh my god, it is amazing. I have found a few chick, a few tr chick tracks. Uh, of Dark Dungeon? Oh yeah, you told me about not that. Not Dark Dungeon, oh. not Dark Dungeon. Uh, I found... Just like like a like a good couple years ago now, yeah. I just I was like looking out the window because I like to look out the window every now and then to see how the how the general weather be like. Yeah. And when I say the window, I mean the window on the front door. Yeah. So I look out. I notice something on my brother's uh, windshield, like tucked under his wiper. So I go outside and I'm like, "Holy shit! It's a chick tract." <laughs> Amazing. My favorite chick yeah. tract and is then... the one of the kid being like, uh. What's to stop me from becoming God? Cause that face he has is so hilarious. Uh, hold on. Like, not even that. Very specifically, it was Charlie's ants. Oh man, the one where the one where it's like most people rejected his message. Shut up. They hated Jesus because he told them the truth. <laughs> you know the mean yes. One. The yes, mean one. I know that one. But yeah, my favorite, my favorite was, one is the one where it was like, "There's no God, right, Mama?" True. So how do I know what's right and wrong? That's up to you, Tyler. Evolution does away with morals. Wow, anything goes. I can lie. I can cheat. What's to stop me from becoming a god? <laughs> oh, and um. Uh. God. Uh, goodness, goodness, God. goodness, goodness. Rest in piss, uh, I you did... piece of shit. <laughs> I, okay, but also, last month, I went up to, I went up to my local donut shop. Yeah. And, um, there was just, uh, <laughs> hold on, I need to go grab it so I can get the name. Oh I'll be, man! I'll be right back. I'll be right back. So yeah, the creator of Chick Tracks uh, died in 2016, and if there is a hell, he's probably there. And god damn, I would love I'm to back. be a I'm fly back. on the wall seeing whatever torture he'd be going through. I'm back. Okay, so I was just like at the local donut shop with like ten bucks, being like, "Okay, I'm gonna get some donut holes for me and my family." Awesome. You should got some kolaches uh, too. Ah, uh, they were they're a little expensive. By the way, I learned I've been pronouncing it wrong. Technically, it's supposed to be pronounced kolosh, not kolachi. No, fuck that. It's a kolachi. Yeah, it's a kolachi. Uh, so anyway, I was just standing there in line. Uh, I looked to my right, and on this little table where they've got like. You know, like straws and like oh yeah, uh, the sugar stra straws and sugar and lids and stuff for coffee. I, I see, I see a little pile. I see a little pile of like three blackened orange paper pamphlets. Oh And it's boy. the little ghosts. Oh, <laughs> amazing. So uh, yeah, that's uh, the moral of the story is uh, don't be a dick about your religion. You're like. Just don't be a dick. Yeah, don't don't be an ass. Yeah, don't try to force your religion onto other people. Uh, so, uh, check. So that concludes this podcast. Check out some of the other stuff on the channel. Yeah. We got Ace Attorney. Um, well, we're playing Ace Attorney. Uh, we also got some D and D campaigns, which we have mentioned both of them. We mentioned the Curse of Strahd. Uh. Uh, campaign. It's being run by our friend Choppy. And then we mentioned uh, uh, my homebrew campaign called World of Tapir. Uh, like we said, it is buck wild. Uh, they actually just returned to the town where they uh, encountered the devil. Uh, the they uh, the city where they encountered the devil uh, at yeah. the end of the last session. Um, yeah. And so they'll be able to see uh, how it's been doing in the last, like, three months since they left. Uh, yeah, and there's other games which have yet to be determined because we are currently in... Be two of our series is recent... Two of our Let's Plays have recently concluded, and so uh, I don't know what else would be on there um, at this point. But, uh, definitely check out, uh, comment challenge of the day, um, 
Wow, what would be a good one? Uh, uh shoot. Um, what's have your fa oh. What's your favorite tri chick track to make fun of? Oh yeah, like I said, my favorite is the one about the uh, what's to stop me from becoming a god. <laughs> uh, but Dark Dungeon uh, mine... is also up there. Yeah, Dark Dungeon. <laughs> That's a classic. Dark Dungeons are way up there. Your character's uh, dead, which means you're dead. Ah, uh, you can't buy. You can't buy. A, I don't know if. I don't know if it's a pamphlet. It might be actually like a full-on book. Is it the one about Jehovah's Witnesses and blood transfusions? No, I was. I, I'm looking at the website right now. You can you can buy chick tracks for like twenty one cents each. I'm not gonna give money to that. I mean, neither am I'm... I. That's for someone else to yeah, do for no. me to find, like on top of the toilet paper in a bathroom. Yeah, no. If I ever like, if I ever want a physical copy, I'm going to find a PDF of it and print it out without paying. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So, uh, with that out of the way, there's nothing left to say, but good night, everybody. Bye-bye.